Gas vapors are extremely flammable. We've all heard that before. But do you know the best way to keep yourself safe at the gas pump? Though gas pump fires aren't common, they do occur, and the resulting fire is dramatic and can be deadly. Caught on surveillance tape in Sand Springs, Oklahoma, this woman starts to fill her tank and then gets back in her car. When she gets back out, not realizing she has picked up a static charge, she goes to the nozzle, creates a static spark that produces a flash. She then pulls the nozzle out and is completely engulfed in flames. The gas station attendant is unaware of how to shut off the pumps. The woman died the next day. A woman starts to put gas in her car, gets back inside without shutting the door. When she gets out and touches the nozzle, she ignites a flash fire from the static charge. She too pulled the nozzle out. In New York, a man starts refueling, jams the latch open, returns to his car, and then gets back out, touches the nozzle, and causes a flash fire. He pulls the nozzle out, but it's jammed open. The fuel continues to feed the fire. In 50% of these cases, the fire happens when the person gets back into their vehicle while the gas is still flowing. 29% happen when the person unscrews the gas cap, and 21% of the time, the reason is not clear. 78% of these fires happen to women. They are the ones that re-enter their cars most, either to return credit cards to their purse, check on the kids, stay warm or dry. As seen in our examples, the hazard doesn't happen when we first pull up to the pump. That's because we discharge any static buildup several times before we even touch the nozzle to begin. There are several ways to prevent these types of fires. First, always turn off your vehicle when you're refueling, even if it's just to fill a portable tank or just to get a couple of dollars of gas. If you can help it, don't re-enter your car once you've started filling the tank. To avoid hazardous spills or overfills, never leave the nozzle unattended during refueling. Never smoke, light matches, or use lighters anywhere near gasoline. Though there have been no reported fires due to cell phone use, it's better to leave them in the car and devote your full attention to the refueling process. If you do have to get back in your car before you're finished refueling, you need to make sure to discharge any possible buildup of static electricity when you get out. Touch the metal part of your door first, or touch the pump first. Just be sure that the first thing you touch is something other than the nozzle. Since gasoline expands as it warms, do not overfill or top off your tank. This will also prevent gasoline spills. Use only the hold open latch provided on the nozzle. Never jam or force the hold open latch open by using some other object such as the gas cap, a rock or wallet. Avoid breathing gas vapors. Make sure you're getting plenty of fresh air. Never let children refuel the vehicle or other fuel containers. If a fire should ignite at the fill pipe, never, never remove the nozzle. Back away immediately and notify the attendant to turn the dispensers off. When the nozzle remains in the fill pipe and the dispensers are turned off, the fire practically goes out on its own causing minimal damage. When filling a gas can, use only an approved container. Always place the can on the ground and keep the pump nozzle in contact with the container. Containers should never be filled inside a vehicle, in a trunk, on the bed of a truck, or on the floor of a trailer. Gas cans in vehicles and on truck bed liners are ungrounded. Watch what happens when we fill this ungrounded gasoline can and hold the nozzle spout in the center of the opening. When filling a portable container, manually control the nozzle valve throughout the process to minimize spilling or splattering. Fill the container no more than 95% full. Place the cap tightly on the container after filling. If gasoline spills on the container, make sure it has evaporated before you place the container in your vehicle. When transporting gasoline, 
make sure it can't tip or slide and never leave it in direct sunlight or in the trunk of a car. Only store gas in approved containers. Keep gasoline away from your eyes and skin. Remove gas-soaked clothing immediately. Use gasoline as a fuel only. Never use it as a cleaning solvent or to help start a fire. Caution should also be exercised when refueling a variety of other vehicles. For motorcycles, be sure to turn off the engine and never refuel while the operator or a passenger is on the vehicle. Do not smoke during refueling. Always maintain nozzle spout contact with the filler neck or metal edge of the tank. Fill the tank at a low flow rate and avoid overfilling. Of course, should a spill occur, wipe it up immediately. For your safety during watercraft vessel fueling, be sure the fueling facility is fully compliant with the latest edition of NFPA 30A code for motor fuel dispensing. Specifically, NFPA mandates the following. Use only automatic closing type nozzles without hold open latches. Never refuel at night except under well-lit conditions. All passengers must be off the boat while refueling. Attendants must be within 15 feet of dispensing controls during the fueling process. The boat owner should do the refueling if possible. The boat owner should be aware of the approximate amount of fuel needed. It is important to note that the person refueling is liable for the fuel spilled into the water. Fines could range in the thousands of dollars. Before fueling, stop all engines, motors, fans, bilge blowers, and other auxiliaries. Shut off all electricity, open flames, and heat sources. Check all bilges for fuel vapors. Extinguish all smoking materials. Close access fittings and openings that could allow fuel vapors to enter enclosed spaces of the vessel. During fueling, always maintain nozzle spout contact with the fill pipe. Do not turn the nozzle upside down during any refueling event in boats or other motor vehicles. The automatic shutoff sensor in the nozzle may not be in contact with the rising fuel in the fill pipe and may result in spills producing a hazardous condition. Avoid overfilling. The nozzle must be attended at all times. And no smoking. After fueling, secure the fill cap tightly. Wipe up spills immediately. Inspect bilges for leakage and fuel odor. Ventilate until odors are removed. When refueling mounted or hauled equipment on trailers or in truck beds, keep the nozzle spout in contact with the fill pipe or container at all times in order to provide adequate ground. When refueling vehicles such as RVs and work trucks, be sure to turn off all pilot lights and generators before entering the gas station. Aftermarket devices added to the dispenser equipment are not recommended. These devices may alter the original design intent and functionality of the products. Some devices could obscure or cover up the important warnings printed on the product. They may affect the nozzle shutoff sensitivity required by Underwriters Laboratory, and they may interfere with vehicle sheet metal recommendations made by the Society of Automotive Engineers. Static discharge products have been created to help dissipate static buildup. If a static discharge pad is applied to the dispenser, always touch it to dissipate any static buildup. One last thing to consider is that more of these fires happen when the air is cooler and drier, which makes the conditions ripe for static buildup. If a fire should ignite at the fill pipe, never, never remove the nozzle. There's no guarantee that you will never be involved in a fire like the ones we've seen here. But if you follow these safety tips, you'll decrease your odds tremendously. The next time you pull into the gas station or go to fill your gas can, err on the side of caution.